Okay, here's a new one about a cave in France we're about to get into. And uh, what you're seeing here in front of you is an opened area in the ground, pretty much a hollow with some bones in it. And after excavation, they're leaving these things in situ, or exactly as they're found, and they're going to keep them that way, not even pulling them out, making recreations or anything like that at this point, for sure. And uh, they'll talk about it here in the, the thing, but you see, it's a barrow, and it is where a cave bear used to live in ancient times. It's where it may have birthed its young, and so on, too. So when I named this video, Clan of the Cave Bear, I did for a reason. There's another barrow also over here, and there's one back in this hollow that's here. That's the only ones that are shown in this photograph here, but that's pretty much enough. I wonder if you've ever seen the movie Clan of the Cave Bear. A lot of my friends started trying to watch it and so on, and even though it had Daryl Hannah in it and all of that, they just couldn't seem to do it met a lot of people over years that watched part oh yeah I know what you're talking about but that's about it other people have paid attention where it goes through it mainly archaeology and people that get into ancient history because it is kind of a weird depiction trying to show you the first of Cro-Magnons or Homo sapiens dealing with Neanderthals and how it's possible things went down and because there were so many scenarios, you can just about bet that even though it's all pulled into one movie, those scenarios all happened at one time or another. It's interesting, though, in the movie, she gets all painted up and stuff in one portion of it, and then everybody's drinking out of this one deal that's made out of this secret magic liquid, and everybody gets messed up, and they're doing this sacred dance. And then she gets into a trance and wanders off into another room and sees all the guys there and ancestors and he speaks to her and they're one and things happen and so we see that there's a, a moment of enlightenment perhaps brought about by an intoxicated moment where your mind might not ever go and think the things that it did at that moment so think of clan of the cave bear and Ayla and remember the clan as we read through this. Grotto de Cossac, cave in Dordogne, France, is the site of a stunning cave art containing more than 800 figurative engravings of animals and humans that are between 25 and 30,000 years old. It also contains the remains of at least six humans dated to the same period with one possible exception. It's the only known example of human remains interred so deep within a cave that also contains artworks. This should show you that people were using caves for special things like shelters and stuff, but also people have been buried there, but they're usually not back in the sanctum type of part that anybody would go to. And in this case, it was for some reason. We may never be able to totally pull out the reason, but your mind probably can start coming up with a few reasons. For the past 10 years, a research team has been studying these human remains in situ to discover what they reveal about the lives, customs, and beliefs of the people of that time. The research is published this week in the Journal Proceedings of Natural Academy of Sciences of the United States of America, PNAS. Dr. Eileen Schatzman, a research fellow at the University of Wollongong at the University of Bordeaux in France, is part of an international team led by the University of Bordeaux's professor Jacques Jobert, working inside the cave to uncover its secrets. Dr. Schatzman said that in addition to the usual challenges involved in piecing together the ancient past from the archaeological remains, Grotte de Cusac project presented researchers with a number of other obstacles. The French Ministry culture has classified the cave as a natural heritage site and restricted access to it, only for researchers. Researchers has to be conducted on site and only by observation. No excavations are allowed anymore and nothing can be removed from the cave. 
Because of high carbon dioxide levels, the cave is only accessible a few months a year. Researchers have to wear clean and sterilized protective suits and gum boots in the cave. It's all about protecting the cave, Dr. Schatzman said. Our suits and gum boots not, uh, cannot contain a speck of sediment from outside the cave. Any microorganism or fungus we can breed might have a negative influence on the conservation of the cave. Everything in the cave is fully protected, including the surface of the cave, which is the original paleo surface. We can't touch anything. We can only walk on a single narrow path and have to conduct all research from that path. She adds, it's surprising how much information you can get from observations only. And so we look at them and now they're going around through this and they have their path where they're looking at. And these researchers will get together in a group and look at these sites and will have their little lights and things and talk about it. And they have, oh sure, they take pictures and so on. They've got enough pictures to choke a horse. They look at those pictures and come up with ideas and then they come together as one into the site looking upon the photographs and seeing if they can glean the same information and things along that line. Here's one here that shows somewhat of an overlapping photograph, but that's a horse, plain well to see. And they have other animals, like over here is a woolly mammoth that looks like Snuffleupagus. And we know about woolly mammoths and things, so this dates from a time before time, if you will. But these carvings are way up in the cave in this area and that area. But down here in situ, they have found that there are barrows where these people were buried at. And if they have this set up here, like Planet of the Cave Bear, this would have been, oh, look at it, it's the ultimate kind of setup. But instead, it was used to inter these people into it. Here's one of which right here. I'll just go on. The human remains were found in three locations within the cave and had been deliberately placed in former bear hibernation nests long after bears stopped using the cave. Or maybe not. Maybe they had to fight a bear off to get the cave in the first place. Cave bears and getting the power of the cave bear at one time certainly to archaic humans was an important thing. For they used to take bears' gallbladder and make foods out of it, like they do tiger penis soup and all these other things that's supposed to put virility and all types of things in people. In fact, I used that concept and idea in potions for strength and giant strength and things like that in D D campaigns. In, the, in two of the sites, the bear nest, which form hollowed areas in the cave floor, show signs of being covered with red ochre, ding, before the remains were placed there. And so again, that's that symbolic womb. But isn't the whole cave a symbolic womb of rebirth? And if they put these people in the most sanctive of areas, they were trying real hard to give these people the afterlife they deserved if it was in, within their power. There's also evidence that the bodies had been arranged in a particular way and moved after death. In some instances, the remains of more than one individual are intermingled. Dr. Schatzman's expertise in funerary practices and burial taphonomy, which is the study of decomposition, and lies at the interface between archaeoanthropology and forensic sciences somewhat. In fact, they both can be called on what may seem to be a dead site whenever they realize, no, oh, this is much older. It happens in America whenever you find injury remains. And they go, there's a dead body, and they call in a um, forensic person, and a forensic person tell you, no, we need somebody in archaeoanthropology after looking at it real well. She said a, science, uh, a science, society's funerary rites, its beliefs and practices around death and the relationship between the dead and the living tell us a lot about these people. We aim to reconstruct the attitudes of ancient populations towards death by focusing on the study of the human skeleton and management and treatment of the corpse, Schatzman said. In the Cusack Cave, the use of ochre in barrels shows symbolic behavior that we've talked about a lot in this channel. 
as does the deposition of human remains in a cave decorated with art. There was also an intentional selection of certain bones. For example, in most depositions, no crania were present, but teeth were, which shows that the crania were deliberately taken. And we've talked about this before and how that people used to do this in ancestor veneration. This reveals that the people of this time were dealing with their dead, were manipulating the dead, and looking after the deceased. The number of individuals interred in the cave in the absence of children and infants is revealing. This tells us something about the society and social differentiation because only a part of society receives this special treatment, Dr. Schottman said. Why were these six individuals deposited in the cave? Where are the other deceased? Why only teenagers and adults were those people different from others and why? I have a conclusion that as you mature and say a girl would come of the age and have her periods and so on like that, that she is given of rights and things that she goes through as becoming a woman and after that point they could be part of this but before they were not. We still do this somewhat to infants and children and believe, that, oh, well, if they went to the heaven, to da-da-da, they don't get to choose the idea. It's chosen for them. But they're so innocent, it's, it's done on their behalf. She concludes with males, too, by the way. Same situation, but usually done during a certain year. And this falls all the way down through bar mitzvahs and all kinds of things we have, men's coming of age. She concludes we have more to learn about the Grot de Cusack people, but this study gives us a window into the complex social landscape of our ancient ancestors. Complex mortuary dynamics in the Upper Paleolithic of the decoded Grot de Cusack, France, is published in the Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences in the United States of America. So, ancient extinct cave bear DNA found in modern bears. So... Was there a hybridization going on back then with certain bears? Oh yeah, I think people have realized a long time ago there's a black bear and a grizzly bear. There's a Kodiak form, which is really like a polar bear, and there's variations of that. And all oh, this guy a couple of years ago shot some polar bear, and then they come to find out he didn't have a permit for a grizzly, and it was a white grizzly. But they were all like, what, what? Yeah, so boundaries and things change, and... Uh, yeah, there's just like DNA in humans, you know, and the Caucasians here, we have some Neanderthal DNA mixed with us from long, long ago. So, not too much to think about that. But the reason I wanted to show this to you is because I like this movie, Clan of the Cave Bear. And if you haven't seen it, I behoove you to watch it. It may be a little bit long and boring because there's not as much speech. Because they're really going back in the time of Ugg and they try to portray so. But it's funny that they, during the time when the movie came out, it didn't get much praise. And people said, well, you didn't even portray the Nanathals as looking like they did. And you'd have to find somebody that had a genetic problem and squatty, or you'd have to do this or do that. Amazing how 20 years later, 30 years later, we've had depictions of Neanderthals now. And that whole thought process has changed. And it really looks a lot more like them than perhaps they might have put a little too much makeup on them. People now say that Neanderthals look quite a lot like the people around and a lot of the depictions almost look like people that you know. In fact, we've made that same commentary in some of my vids. But here we have red ochre burial symbology at 30,000 BC, 2530. But also a strange connection where in the power of the clan of the cave bear a body is buried in a pit that would have been for a cave bear, but you can reborn into a new age. Have you ever seen the Disney show Brother Bear, where Kenai does something bad and this happens and he goes off to kill a mother bear from its child and he gets taken and then he's trapped inside of what ends up being the Aurora Borealis. His brother has to go and try to find him. 
and then come to find out that he has been trapped inside of the young bear's body and how it goes through. And you think, well, that's the plight of some Alaskan people. I tell you, that plight is one of a lot of people that are dealing with woolly mammoths and things back in an ancient day. I showed a video not too long ago where they show the Natufians and their settlement, and it looks exactly like American Indians to people's eyes, only thousands of years before, showing you where they kind of got that from and carried it into the New World. And though they didn't evolve much from that point, the other people that are involved in this at this time did. They can fly now. They've gone into space and they've made all the equipment that I'm finally able to talk to you all about. Now, I'm proud that I live in a civilization that at this point in history at least this is being able to be done. The sad thing is, is if people don't like it, they get yin 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 and wouldn't free speeches out. But I don't even want to talk about that in this vid. We're going to let it go. Tell me what you think about this, and if you've seen Clan of the Cave Bear and the other things in uh, the comments and stuff, and uh, like it if you like it, share and subscribe if you aren't already, and we'll get on to another interesting topic in world history, and the study of where we all come from, and what all this means, and what it meant in ancient times. Peace.